Hi, Pisces. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you're doing well. This reading is for any sun, moon, or rising Pisces. And we will look at the cards. We'll get a sense of the awareness or the big ideas for the week, guidance, and possible outcomes. Okay, so we have the World Major Arcana. We have the Nine of Swords. And we have the Empress Major Arcana. So the World is it's a card of fulfillment it's a card of completion and when we are able to fulfill our dreams or when we're able to achieve our goals um, when we step over that finish line it feels really good we feel that we have um, we've earned the reward that we've been seeking which is to actually fulfill what we had hoped to do so with the world we think of the words completion contentment and fulfillment because you know when we take on a task when we take on a project when we try to build out our dreams you know there's a lot involved it's the long and winding road and sometimes the road is bumpy and sometimes it's smooth and we deal with it we learn to cope and it makes us stronger it makes us wiser it builds our experience and so the next time around when we try to do the same thing, we have some prior information that can help. So the world is truly a beautiful card, a card to celebrate what you have been able to accomplish. Whether it's a smaller assignment or a project that you've been working on or a big multi-month um, project that perhaps you are close to finishing and completing, it's time to take your victory lap it's time to be recognized and you can see she's looking up at the heavens and the heavens are smiling down because what do they want? They want you to have this journey. They want you to have momentum and different cycles and they want you to be able to work toward them to learn, to grow and to achieve, to fulfill because it makes you feel good. You know, it's a very heart filled, Feeling is when you're able to do something that has meaning to you. That's making you feel as if you're on top of your own world. So here we have your world, the things that you do in your world, and we also have the greater world as well. So we can think about how what we do fits in to the larger community, what we choose to do in the future. And again, as this cycle closes, you know, there's room for another task. There's room for another journey. There's room for another opportunity that you're willing to explore, that you're willing to devote time and energy to. And that's the beauty about the world is that you get to appreciate, you get to feel the good feels about accomplishing something. And then you get to say, well, what's next? You know, I'm going to move in this direction for the next journey that I take. So for some of you, the ending of something you've been working on successfully and the process perhaps of choosing something else that is purposeful to you. So with this world completion, fulfillment and contentment, it is a uh, interesting um, depiction here to see the nine of swords right next to, to it. Because the nine of swords is about worry. It's about concern, can be about feeling very sad, um, but we often associate it with sleeplessness and insomnia and worry that keeps you up at night, the thoughts that race through your mind and the times that you feel unable to sleep because the pressure is like banging on your head. So we've all felt like that. And here we see the, the sword stacked above the, uh, woman here and it's uh you know it's a, it's a part of what we deal with we deal with days that are better than others some you know some days are lousy some days are good sometimes we're really stressed out we're worried we're concerned you may be concerned about finances you may be concerned about a relationship you may be concerned about future business bringing that in a lot of things can weigh on us and it's a matter of how we you know, how we can ride through those times when we feel stress or worry or where something has upset us or someone has upset us 
we can get very, I don't know if the word obsessed, obsessive is the right word, but you can get very caught up in what isn't happening and that can weigh on you. So what do we have to do? We have to find a way to start to release this heaviness. Focus on what you do have. Focus on something positive. Start a gratitude journal. Uh, you know, one small step per day doesn't mean that all of this weight of the world is going to leave you. It just takes time to work through things. And ultimately, this too shall pass. It always does. Um, it's, a, again, a matter of mindset and it's a, it's a matter of being proactive, which is to try to reset your thinking, try to reframe what you're doing. And, you know, if you have to have, uh, I don't know, whatever you would do to try to get some good night's sleep, turning off all the electronics, hiding your phone, closing the blinds, just making sure that you're in a position where you can get some rest because you know, when you're not rested, then it adds into the feeling of exhaustion and the feeling of stress. So here's our beautiful Empress right next door to the nine of swords. And the word that comes to mind is love. The words that come to mind, love and compassion. She is in nature. She is surrounded by abundance. She has created comfort within her life. That is important to her to feel comfort, to feel, um, proud perhaps of what surrounds her. She, it's that sensual touch of, uh, having perhaps a soft blanket or whatever it may be. There's some connection there to how it makes one feel and it makes one feel good, warm, comforted, whatever it may be. So this Empress is our motherly idea of someone who is feminine and someone who the possibility of being a, a mother, either with child or thinking about children, dealing with children. But it's, um, it's the connection to the feminine uh, ideal of being supportive, loving, kind, thoughtful, nurturing, of nurturing the unborn child for nine months, feeding it, making sure the, uh, that she stays healthy as a, as a new mother would do. This also can be symbolic of your ideas, of nurturing your ideas, of being creative, of being inspired and doing all the things necessary to make them come alive, to take action, to enjoy them. Enjoy your passions, enjoy your creations, enjoy your inspirations. That's what the Empress would tell you. Enjoy nature, feel good, take care of yourself. And she is taking care of others as well. She has her eye on what's happening, loving, supportive, thoughtful, and going to help out as needed. So a couple things here, we have the relative high of feeling pretty good of accomplishing something. Then we have this worry or concern, you know, maybe you're worried about what's going to happen next, or maybe you're worried about something that has changed and that's going to impact you and is causing sleepless nights. And then we have the Empress, which is providing the good common sense, I would say, approach of being grounded, of being aware of abundance of what is good in life. Also the nurturing and the loving, the unconditional love as well of providing that. So if you have someone within your life that has these characteristics of someone that is trustworthy, who is open, who is a good listener, someone that would be able to talk to you and maybe to bring your mind to peace if you are truly uh, feeling disabled or feeling whatever it may be that you're just having such a hard time. Lean on the people in your life who are compassionate and sympathetic. You know, more than likely they want to help. They're willing to listen, you know, willing to come over. So there's a lot of power with the Empress, which is, you know, 
um, beauty, comfort, sensuality, this motherhood. And it's the motherhood of, of actual children, of guiding them, of leading them, of loving them. And it also is the motherhood of your ideas, of your talents, of your abilities, of what you can bring to the world, of what you can create for the world. So an interesting spread for the day. Let's take a look at what we have in terms of numerology. So we have 21, 21 and nine is 30. We have 33 and 33 is a master number. And I believe it's like the spiritual master, the spiritual teacher, someone who is um, intuitively right on and guided. Now I'm not a hundred percent certain. I'm just, I think that I recall this somewhat that it really is about the spiritual teacher, uh, the, uh, spiritual master, if you will. We'll have to look that up and we'll leave a comment <laughs> below about what you think. So to close the reading, let me choose an Oracle card for an affirmation or a thought for the day. Time to go. The sun sets and rises each day, and it's the same with the avenues in your life. See the beauty within each sunset in your life and know that the sun will also rise again tomorrow. Endings are merely the start of a new beginning, and we are with you through each phase and cycle. So we have cycles and completion here. We have the idea to hold on to something that brings comfort to you, which is the sun does rise every day. You put, you get out of bed, you put your feet on the floor, you get dressed and you never know what may happen, all the good that can happen. So I think that it's a beautiful card and a beautiful thought for the day. So friends, this is what I have for you. I hope that you found something helpful here with this reading. If you did, please subscribe, like this video, share this video, and I will see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.